Thank you for that gracious introduction. I wish we all had $10 billion, in which case this would be a far easier talk to give. Uh, the title of this talk is How to Build a Billion Dollar Business. The time for this talk is five minutes. I will not be able, I do not pretend to be able to do justice in five minutes to giving you the richness of the detail in building a billion dollar business. That detail really is in the anecdotes that David was covering and the details of any hard-worn hard, um, entrepreneur. But the intention with this talk is to really tease you with a framework on thinking about shifting a mindset towards building a billion-dollar business. Um, with that said, let me give you a quick background about, why, about myself and why I have some insight into this. I spent six years at the VF VC fund DFJ, where, among other things, I led the investment in Justin TV, which became Twitch, which got acquired for $970 million, about a billion dollars. And we funded, I was the second institutional investor in that company, and also funded other companies that have done about half a billion in revenue. I also teach entrepreneurship in the engineering school at Stanford, and you can see all of our Stanford lectures online at ecorner.stanford.edu. And today I direct Alchemist. Alchemist, just very quickly, is an accelerator for startups that monetize for enterprises. We give you $36,000, bring you to San Francisco, and we run a six-month program, which is a structured path towards fundraising, sales, and mentorship. Um, we were, CB Insights rated us the top accelerator in 2016 in terms of how much money our companies raised. Y Combinator was number two. Um, and then we've also um, had a bunch of other good accolades. Um, and we're funded by a bunch of uh, VCs and major corporates. Okay, the basic principle that I want to express here is, is the old Archimedes quote that if you give me a, long, a, a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to put it, I can move the world. And the notion here is, is that if you architect something correctly, the effort is the same for more impact. Said another way, Ben Horowitz famously said, you know, it takes as much work to build a mediocre company as it does to build a big company. And any founder you talk to will tell you that. If they're struggling, they're not working any easier. In fact, they're working harder. So if you're going to have to work hard anyways, you might as well go big. Okay? And the key insight, I'm going to skip this slide, is you know, in Silicon Valley, we have this notion of a billion-dollar unicorn, these, these seemingly fictitious but actually real um, uh, companies that are worth a billion dollars. And there's different studies, but effectively now, you could uh, safely estimate that around 10 companies a year get funded that'll be worth about a billion dollars, and around 15 that'll be worth at least half a billion. The key insight, though, is that if you're going from um, an initial valuation to a billion dollar valuation in 10 years, you have to 1,000x your valuation in 10 years. I mean, just said simply. Which means, and that's a classic venture-backed model which means that you need a 10x, said another way, your valuation every three years to get to a 1,000x return, which means that you need a triple every 18 months. And effectively, that is the textbook calendar, the textbook schedule to, to raise, to create a billion dollars. You cannot get there if you are building a company that grows linearly. So a linear company is one in which, if I'm walking linearly, it's one, two, three, four, five. If I structure, though, a company to grow exponentially, it'll be multiplicative. One, two, four, eight, sixteen. And the basic principle is to architect your startup so that it's on a multiplicative curve. There are a couple of, and I don't have time to go through all this, there's a couple of drivers for exponential growth, and they can be as simple as gross margins. If you, you know, VCs, one of the first things they'll ask you is, what are your gross margins on your business? The reason why they ask that, if it's at 50% or less, it's almost impossible to grow multiplicatively. If I sell a cookie for a dollar and it costs me 50 cents to make, I make enough margin, 50 cents, to produce one more cookie. So I will continually be at a steady state. But if I can shift that margin up, and if I can sell that cookie for a buck 50, if I go to the nice part of downtown Montreal, suddenly I get a buck of profit, and I can produce two cookies, and I'm on a multiplicative curve. And that grows exponentially as my margins increase. There are other multiplicative levers beyond that, which I will not be able to go through, um, uh, that, that you can exploit. 
And those include the technology or technology and network effects. But the basic principle is to think about the drivers of how you generate value and think about if you can structure those in a way where every added effort creates a multiplicative effect. <laughs> so this is a bit of a tease of a talk. Um, but um, feel free to ping me if you guys want to explore this further. Uh, but I have to be uh, deferential to my time. So thank you, everybody. <laughs>